Good morning, or depending when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name is Ross, and as always, told out of voice radio. So today, well, I'd like to show you a new Rapidash card, actually. Now, I did show you a new Ponytar the other day in a news video, and the new Ponytar was incredibly relevant, because it is the very first card ever drawn by a new artist. Of course, there's a lot of cards coming out in Japan at the moment. They need more artists. They've hired a new one. They drew Ponytar. Now, that itself wasn't really enough to warrant making a video. But this new Rapidash, ladies and gentlemen, I'm a big fan of this new Rapidash. It's not some kind of stunningly game-breaking card. But as a Pokemon, you might want to pop into a deck. Oh, yes. I'm kind of a fan. So... If we start off then having a little bit of a look at the basics, we've got 100 HP, which is frankly rather low, given that we've got basics like Zapdos sitting there with 110. Yeah, we can do better. But it's got Free Retreat. Free Retreat is amazing. Free Retreat is a reason Tapu Koko, the promo card, saw so much play. It's a huge bonus. It means after a KO, you're good. After a card like Guzma or Escape Rope, you've got something to put up. Now, to be fair, it's a bit less relevant with those two cards rotating out, but still having a free retreater is awesome. The weakness to water, honestly, not a huge problem. There's a few decks playing Articuno and Quagsire is running around here and there, but it's not seeing a huge amount of play, so we're all right. Uh, being a fire Pokemon is great. You're hitting weakness on grass Pokemon like Celebi and Venusaur. And metal Pokemon like Lucario and Melmetal. And we're like, yeah, cool. And of course, you've got all those other tricks. You've got stuff like Welder. You've got Heat Factory, Prism Star. We're doing all right, ladies and gentlemen. But the main attack here is one that I think could be exceptionally relevant given the format we're moving into. Now... It's called Behind, but it's Jet Punch. One Fire Energy, 30 to the active, 30 to one of your opponent's bench Pokemon. And like I've said, this is Jet Punch. This isn't some kind of new game-breaking kind of attack. We saw it on Boswell GX, and in fact, we saw it on Feromosa and Boswell GX, where it was also called Jet Punch. We did see a similar thing here with Xerneas, though to be clear, it was Xerneas GX that had this particular attack, although it was 20 to the active, 20 to one of your opponent's bench. And then we did see it a little while ago on Manectric EX, where it did 20 to the active, 20 to the bench. And here's the thing, right? The only one of those cars that hasn't really seen much play is Xerneas GX. All of the others have. Manectric was great. Boswell was great. Pheromosa and Boswell was really, really good in Japan. But they did have a format where it was legal before Reshiram and Charizard came out. The problem was when Reshiram and Charizard was released, it made the best Pokemon in the format hit it for weakness, because Reshiram and Charizard just instantly became the best Pokemon in the format. That was a problem. I'll be honest with you, ladies and gentlemen, that was a problem. There's not a huge amount we can do about this, but it's a little bit sad. So, my point is, this is good. It's a good attack. But then again, if we look at these other Pokemon, there are reasons. So yes, the first attack of Manectric was good and it did see play, but you can also do 120 for 2 energy if there was a tool on the Pokemon. And it evolved into Mega Manectric, which incidentally also had free retreat. But had an amazing attack for 2 energy that did 110 and attached 2 energy to the bench. It was also played a lot of the time with Rough Seas, which gave it healing after it free retreated to the bench. So there's a reason Manectric was so good. Boswell's Jet Punch was amazing. But we also had Diancy Prism Star. And we also had strong energy, so it wasn't really ever hitting 30 to the active. Plus, you then had stuff like Beast Ring and, of course, Beast Energy and big attacks as well. Just using Beast Energy and Diancy Prism Star, you'd be hitting 80 to the active, 30 to the bench. So there are reasons why they're so good. Feromosa and Boswell was largely played as a quad deck over in Japan. 
But again, it was, you know, Jet Punch in the early games, spreading a bit of damage around, getting some damage on the field, doing yo fang. But it was always waiting for that point where it was right. Now I can use Beast Ring, let's roll, let's do this. Let's get these bigger attacks coming out. That was the point of Feromosa and Buzzwall. It was using Elegant Soul for 190, using Beast Game GX to do 50 damage and try and get KOs so that you could take an extra prize card or if you could get a lot of energy on there, and it really was a lot of extra energy, then taking three extra prize cards. So... The point is, we've seen this attack on a whole bunch of Pokemon in the past, but they all had something else going for it. Can we make an argument for this Rapidash being relevant? With Free Retreat, we can. And the theory here is extremely simple. We don't have great switching and we don't have great gusting post-rotation. You see, one of the things we've seen about cards like Buzzwole in the past few months, as we've been rolling through our older format, is everyone's playing Guzma. And the vast majority of people are playing Ace Roller. And when I say playing them, I don't mean they've got one or two of them in there. It was pretty much standard to have four to six, usually six plus, of the pair of those cards. And that's before they get into any other switching cards. So the problem you find yourself with is that you can't make the most of it. And when it comes to something like Jet Punch, look, I know that there are times where you can use Boswell and do 80 to the active, 30 to the bench. But the best use for an attack like this is when you can get three or four turns of it and really start spreading damage around. Because there are other cards we're losing to the rotation. Chief among them is Choice Band. You see, if we take a look at Reshiram and Charizard, which is the best fire Pokemon we got at the moment, it does 230 damage. And 230 damage is great against non-GXs, basic GXs, Stage 1 GXs and weaker Stage 2 GXs. It is not great against Tag Team GXs, because the weakest ones we've got... You're talking Mimikyu and Gengar, you're talking Pikachu and Zekrom. They've got 240 HP. You're not KOing any of them. There are no Tag Team GXs that you can actually KO using this attack. So you need some extra damage. And there are a few options around there. You've got Shrine of Punishment, and but then that will hurt you as well. So what we basically have is early game attackers. Or non-GX attackers like Volcanion and Arcanine, which are coming in and getting two hit KOs. And I'm not going to sit here and insult your intelligence by suggesting this is going to replace something like Arcanine or Volcanion as a secondary non-GX attacker. It's just not. It's not good enough. What this is for, very simply, is especially if you go first. Turn 2, 30 to the active, 30 to the bench, 30 to the active, 30 to the bench, 30 to the active, 30 to the bench. Hoping they've got worse switching options and worse gusting options, that they will post rotation. And then spreading a bunch of damage around so that when you bring in your actual attackers, something like your Reshiram and Charizard, something like your Arcanine, something like your Volcanium, the Pokemon that you've been hitting are now in range of being KO'd. Maybe you even combine it with the Ninetales that does give a good gusting effect post rotation. Although, if I'm perfectly honest with you, I don't know many decks where you're going to find space for the Stage 1 Ninetales as a tech and the Stage 1 Rapidash. Pre-rotation, I don't think Rapidash works. I think there's so many switching options that it's a fun free retreater, but it's a Stage 1 and I'm not loving it. Post-rotation, I don't think it's a great Pokemon. But I do think that there are going to be games where you can have a Pokemon in the active that your opponent doesn't want there. That they can't get out the active. And if there's, say, two turns where they can't get it out the active, you're talking 90 to the active and 30 to each of three bench Pokemon, though you could double up and do 60 or even treble up and do 90 to one particular Pokemon. And then they're in range of Reshiram and Charizard. The fact is that with stuff like Choice Band and Professor Kakui rotating out, we're going to need other ways to do that extra bit of damage, or we're going to have to just accept and do two hit KOs. Rapidash could be one of those ways. Not some powerhouse amazing Pokemon, but a free retreater that can do 30 to the active, 30 to the bench. I mean, look, Latios did 30 to the active, 30 to the bench, and that saw quite a lot of play in this past format. Now, admittedly, that was for a double colorless energy on a basic, but we're basically talking here of, well, 
Okay, it's a stage one, not a basic, but it's a single energy with free retreat. And if Latios was a really good Pokemon that saw a lot of play, I don't see why a free retreating, easier to pay the attack cost version of it wouldn't. Especially in a format where we need the extra damage way more than we did before. So let's give it between three and four Wossies. We don't give half Wossies, that would be barbaric. I'm not going to sit here and argue this is some kind of amazing, wonderful Pokemon, but I am going to say that I could see this being played in decks for the free retreat and the damage spreading around in a format where we need the extra damage. So that's what I think about Rapidash. I would, however, very much like to know what you think about Rapidash. So please do let me know in the comment section. Go nuts! Be nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wassy, and Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv slash PTCG Radio. If you want to support the channel, get some bonus podcasts and all that, then head on over to patreon.com slash PTCG Radio where you can do exactly that. And please do make sure you're checking out youtube.com slash plays where we talk about games that don't even have Pokemon in. But by far the most important thing is always... Look after yourselves till next time. Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching PTCG Radio.